What's up, everybody? This is Coach MJ, the coaching connoisseur, and I am glad to be here sharing with you. I hope you're having a fabulous hump day. Today is Wednesday, and today we're going to be talking about six things that you need to stop doing right now if you ever want to stop being broke. The thing is, it doesn't matter whether you have a job, whether you work for yourself, whether you have a side hustle, no matter what you do, if you are doing these things that we're going to be talking about today, you're going to stay broke and probably like always ends up happening. As I'm talking, I'm probably going to think of some more that are not on my list, but because there's more than six things that you need to stop doing. But get your notepad out and take the notes down because this is going to be some of the most valuable information that I ever share with you. Because here's what's true. Some people think, and this is part of the, the broke mindset is that all I need is more money. And if I just had more money, things would be better. But that's not true because you can make big screw ups with big amounts of money, just like you make smaller screw ups with the small amounts of money that you already have. Bible says, you know, he who's faithful in little will be can be faithful in a great amount if it's given to them. And that applies to a lot of things in life. But that is a true principle in life is that if you can't do well with what you already have, getting more is not going to help. You're just going to make bigger mistakes and screw up. So what we're going to be talking today about today are things that you are doing that are keeping you stuck in that broke space in your life. And a lot of that space where you're broke is between your ears, that poverty mindset. But if you stop doing the things we're going to be talking about today, you are going to be light years ahead of where you were right before you stop doing these things. You're going to be open up to new opportunities, new ways of thinking, new ways of operating in the world that are going to help you to begin to build wealth. Because here's what's true. And you may have even heard some of these stories. We love these kind of uh, feel good stories about the little old lady who was always pinched pennies and then she died and they found she had a million dollars stored up in her mattress and things like that. You don't have to have a lot of money to build, to start out building towards having a great amount of money. A million dollars is made up of a million one dollar, right? In other words, each dollar, dollar may not seem like much, but they all add up the same as if you think about an election. And they say, oh, well, my vote doesn't count, right? Well, your vote does count because every vote helped that in the millions that are actually submitted came from one person. So the same way votes count, each dollar counts. And you have to see your money is that valuable one dollar at a time. You don't have to have a lot of money starting out to build wealth. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about things you need to stop doing to stop being broke. And the first one is, you need to stop taking advice from your broke friends, your broke families, members, and people who don't have what you want, right? And people who are not on the path to get what you want. You know how I'm always telling you that if you know something that somebody else doesn't know, but they want to know, that makes you an expert. So even if a person's not a gazillionaire and that's your goal, even if they have accomplished a, a milestone, a significant milestone on the way there, maybe they're a millionaire. They can tell you how to get to a million because they've done it. But what happens so often and so funny to think about it, but we do it so easily is when we're looking at an opportunity, you know, it could be a business that you're buying into or starting, or it could be getting professional coaching. It could be going back to school for those of you who want to get another degree. And we will ask people around us who have not achieved what we're trying to achieve by engaging in that new activity, what they think about it. And I think sometimes we do it because deep down we may be afraid or in some other for some other reason, we don't want to do the thing kind of. And we're looking for somebody to talk us out of it. But why would you ask a person who makes the same type of money you do, who has a job like you do anything about money, anything about entrepreneurship? Why would you ask a person who has no money in the bank? And I'm talking about significant money. I'm not talking about their paycheck. I'm talking about significant money. Why would you ask them what they think about an investment opportunity? You need to ask people who are in the investment world what they think about it and what they would do. Right. But it's so easy to ask the people who are right beside us, that vertical alignment with people, what they think. But if you're trying to go vertical or, or go up in life financially, health wise, relationship wise, you can't keep taking advice from people who are no better off than you or who have never experienced what you're trying to experience. So 
your broke friends and family. I think a lot of times we want to take advice from them or people want to take advice from their broke friends and family because they figure they're going to give me good advice because they care about me, I guess. But here's what's true. They can't give you good advice. If they're broke and you're broke and you're trying to get unbroke, why would listening to them help you get unbroke? Oh, yeah, I tried that and it didn't work. OK, do you know what they tried specifically, who they worked with, what they did, why it didn't work? whether it was their yeah. advisor right they say oh yeah i had a broker and he didn't do it or i had a banker and it messed up no you need to talk to the experts in the field not the person who claims they had a bad experience and then a lot of times we get the information second and third hand and we claim that you claim that you're doing your research right you say oh yeah i did my research on that company and i don't trust them I did my research on that financial coach and I don't trust them. Your research was going out to Google and reading reviews or not even reviews. Sometimes that would be a step up. Just looking at their website and you got a gut feeling. That gut feeling was your fear or your complacency talking you out of it. That's not research. That's a Google search. Research is a deeper dive than most people ever take to really know whether a company is good enough or a coach is good enough or a financial opportunity is good enough. Stop taking advice from people who don't have anything. And we're specifically talking about money who are broke, no matter wh where, what they feel about you, no matter if they think they have your best interest at heart. Stop taking advice from broke friends about financial outcomes and what it's going to take to get there. The second thing you need to do to stop being broke is to stop spending everything you make. You should be paying yourself first. Have you ever heard that? Pay yourself first. That means you should be saving money, a little bit to spend for fun, all those things. And then you're giving and, and you're spending. You should not or on your um, bills and things. You should not be spending everything you make to live. So when you get a raise, when you get extra money, you should not spend it on the things you were already you know, spending your money on. In other words, if you have a car and you get a $500 pay raise a month, don't go out and get a more expensive car. If you uh, get a little extra bonus or something and you normally are buying clothes, but you weren't expecting that money, don't go spend that on clothes. You weren't even expecting to have that. Anything extra that comes in needs to go to something that you're not already doing. And you need to adjust your lifestyle in the temporary to spend less than what you make. Everything shouldn't be maxed out. You shouldn't have the $150 cable bill. You shouldn't have the going out spending $900 on a phone and all that when you're broke. And the people who do that kind of stuff are typically broke. Not saying that rich people don't get the phones but or, and the other things that you're buying, but they're in a different space. But if you ever want to get there, you have to stop just taking your money and just transferring it from your employer's bank account to the bank accounts of the stores and the merchants that you do business with. Somebody's not going to like this, but that's okay. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to help you get free. Okay. Stop spending everything that you make. It makes no sense for you to come to the Build Wealth While You Travel Challenge and, and learn how to make money as a coach and then still be tricking your money off the same way you did when you had the job money. There are rich or people that I don't call them rich, but um, there are people who have a lot of money that come through their hands. I guess you can call them rich. There's a difference between being rich and being wealthy, right? There are people who have a lot of money coming through their hands, but they don't apply wealth principles that can keep you from being broke. And they just trick off a lot of money. Think about people that win the lottery and they're broke three or five years later. Think about ball players who, after they get an injury, they got nothing because they went out and buying houses and doing all this stuff for everybody in their family. And they have nothing to show for it. They were rich but they didn't have those wealth building principles in place to keep them from being broke. So they were just broke on a bigger scale. Okay. So stop spending everything you make just because you have it. You need to learn how to invest in things. You need to learn how to spend your money on things that are going to help you make more money, such as having, uh, you know, if you're operating a business, those of you who want to start a coaching business, getting you a professional coach yourself so that you don't make a lot of mistakes with your money and with your time that's going to keep you from getting where you want to go quickly. The next thing you need to do to stop, you need to stop doing now in order to stop being broke is that you need to stop earning your money so slowly. Now, this is one that's going to hit people hard. 
Um, because we often hear the little sayings, things like get rich quick schemes and things of that nature. And there are get rich quick schemes, things like those pyramids. I can't even remember what they were. They went around, they go around the internet every once in a while. And people saying, if you give me money, then you get money back. And anybody who understands math and how money moves and you can lay it out with monopoly money can tell you that stuff doesn't work, but people get confused and they want something for nothing. So they give a stranger their money and they don't get anything back. And then they're upset. That is a get rich quick scheme. That does not work for everybody. Only works for the people at the beginning. But making money quickly with a scalable model that lets you leverage time and technology is a, the way to go. You, it's harder to make money slowly. If you think about saving $100 a month um, and you've got, let's see, I think it's $100 a week. So $400 a month, but $100 a week is $5,200 a year. And you're trying to save up hundred thousand dollars let's say it will take you and i don't know if i'm doing the math right oh if you are trying to do a hundred thousand dollars and you divide that by 52 weeks and you divide that by 400 it'll take you uh oh goodness my calculator died with me it'll take you a lot of years to save up a million dollars that was what my number was sorry <laughs> I was trying to do a million dollars. Some kind of way it ends up being like 20 years. It will take you if you're saving a hundred dollars a year for a hundred dollars a week for 20 years to get to a million dollars. That's 20 years of working, whatever you had to work to scrape together four hundred dollars. Right. That's a long time. And all the money you could not be making off of that money because you're stretching it out over years versus earning a million dollars in a year because you do real estate or because you have a, uh, a premium price coaching program or because, you know, whatever that is, and you make the money more quickly, but legitimately, just because you make money fast does not mean it's not legitimate, but it's a broke mindset that says, money when you make it too fast is not going to it's not going to work for you it's a negative and you're not going to be able to keep it you won't be able to keep it if you keep a broke or poverty mindset with it but if you use wealth principles and you earn the money quickly you will be able to make let that money make you more money and use that money and make more money and, and, and it, it it builds and builds that's how wealthy people stay wealthy their money makes money for them but the idea that you have to earn money slowly i'm gonna put aside a little bit every month not to say there's anything wrong with that if that's where you are but some people think that there's virtue in only earning money slowly and i'm here to tell you there's not there's people out here that are able to use a one-to-many approach and i'm one of them to earn um a higher income in a shorter amount of time because you're leveraging technology, you're leveraging your time, you're leveraging scalable models that just work so that you can reach more customers in a short amount of time. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. And when you do that and then you reinvest the money in other things that can make money and you don't have to put in effort, such as real estate, such as stocks and bonds and some other things, that's how your money then becomes cyclical and you can get out of the hole. But the idea that you can only earn a lot of money slow, it's actually harder to put this. If you stretch it out, saving up that million dollars over 20 years, that's 20 years of working a job. That's 20 years of showing up. That's 20 years of being away from your family and not being able to take the vacations that you want to take and all the things that come with staying stuck in the job world because you think that making money, and I know people, they probably look at my my emails and my ads and they're thinking, what do you mean? Make a six-figure coaching business in um, within a few months or build it towards becoming a six-figure business in a few months. That don't sound right. That sounds crazy. Let me tell you something. The people out here in the world who are making money quickly and learning these wealth principles instead of having a block, a poverty block, they can tell you and I can tell you it's real. It's not illegitimate or shady or a scheme or something you need to be suspicious of. But the, you know, the upper crust, the people that don't have the right intention, they want you to keep that mindset and think, yeah, if you just keep working a job, let me give you $25, $30 an hour or less to work for me while I'm making millions and billions of dollars off of your effort. They want you to stay stuck in that mindset so they can continue to make all the money. But people like me who have the right intentions with people. We want to share that with you. And that's why I'm talking about this today. Stop earning your money so slow and find ways to make your money so quickly. Again, I'm not talking about pyramid schemes. I'm not talking about cheating people. I'm talking about legitimate, scalable business models and things that just 
you just have to get into that world and then uh, your, your mind will be blown. I have a, uh, a coach that I follow and just the things I've learned from him in the course of a few months have completely revolutionized how I look at money and how it has changed, how I've changed, how I approach money. There's things, there's people out here that are doing what you could be doing using your expertise as a coach. But you got to know that it's possible. You've got to, again, stop taking advice from broke people because broke people are the ones that tell you, yeah, it can't work. You can't make that much money fast unless you're selling drugs. That's a broke mindset. It's a lie. It's a lie. You can join the ranks of the wealthy people and it doesn't have to take forever. You don't have to worry about the time you've already spent not doing it, but you can start now. And that's going to lead into the next thing I want to share is stop procrastinating. If you know anything about how compound interest grows, the later you put your money into that compounding interest scenario, the less money you're going to earn over time. You can never catch up with what you could have made unless you put more money in. But with that original amount, you can never catch up. That's why they say start saving early. The younger you are, the better. The same is true about moving into this wealthy space. Stop procrastinating and thinking that somehow if you, you know, okay, I'm going to get to it. You know, I've talked to people all the time about, you know, you've got something that's worth eight to ten thousand dollars per client because of the life changing transformation you can help them to experience. And you need to do it now. Who in the world can look at something that can make them ten thousand dollars per customer and say, OK, I'm going to get to it. I'm, I'm going to get around to it. It's either that they don't really believe it works or they might not believe in themselves that they can make it work. Or they just don't know how, but they're not willing to get help from somebody who does know how. All of those are stubborn mentalities that say, I'm going to put it off to tomorrow. Who in the world wants to continue working a job where you're still clocking in every day, asking for PTO, and can I take off next week, and I got to wait 52 weeks before I get more time off, and all that stuff, when you could be traveling the beaches and the urban centers of the world, living life on your terms while you are helping people to have their best life with whatever transformation you can create. Who looks at those two options and says, yeah, I'm going to stay with my job. Yeah, I'm going to keep making 25, 35 bucks an hour when I could be making $10,000 ahead for a few hours of work by sharing my, my gifts with the masses. Yeah, I'm going to stick with this. Only a person who is either doesn't believe in themselves, doesn't believe that they can make it work, or is trying to do it on their own. If you're trying to do it on your own, no, you can't do it. Like every coach needs a good coach to guide them to that promised land, to guide them through the pitfalls and the, and the minefield. You need help to do that. So either, and you know what? We black women, we got this real bad. I actually talk to women sometimes. I even have had friends say this, that they really feel bad about asking for help. This strong black woman caricature stereotype that has been placed on us is killing us. It hurts our health. It hurts our relationships and how we treat our men. And it hurts us in business and finances because we feel like we can do everything ourselves and we can't. So when people call me a strong black woman, I correct them in real time. No, ma'am. No, sir. Don't put that on me because what that says is I can't be. Uh, I can't make any mistakes or I can't be less capable. I can't be flawed. Other, You don't hear them talk about strong white women. You don't hear them talk about strong Asian women. They don't talk about strong Hispanic women. And it's not because we're better, although we are awesome in a lot of ways that makes us unique as black people. But this idea that we have to be strong and can't ask for no help, I'm going to figure it out. Or, or I, I'm never worth investing in myself, right? Everything needs to be free or cheap. Other, except when it comes to the stuff we wear, right? We put a lot of money in that. But when it comes to our business, I'm going to figure it out. I, I know how to do it. I'm, I'm going to try to piece together this free stuff. That's not how life works. But when people are procrastinating on the life of their dream, it's usually because of these other things in the back of their mind. I can do it on my own. I'll figure it out. I'm strong. I, I did it my own so far. No, that's not a strong stance. That's actually a weak stance, a person that feels like they can do everything on their own. The real strength is in building a network, getting vertical support and guidance, as well as horizontal support and guidance to get where you want. So stop procrastinating on doing the things that's going to get you away from being broke. And then there's a couple more. We need to stop earning by the hour. Stop earning by the hour. I just alluded to it. Employers are willing to give you pennies to help them build their fortune. 
They're willing to give you pennies for 40, 50 hours a week so that they can make all the money, right? And you probably know it. You know how much, you know, if you work for, a, for uh, what was that, Fortune 500 company like I did, you know, they have to put their earnings out there. You know how much the company is worth. The company I used to be worth uh, was about to get, um, was it acquired, right? They kept calling it a merger, but it was an acquisition. And they had written in the papers that if the acquisition falls through, that they get paid $5 billion by the company that now no longer gets to buy them. That's billion with a B for a sale that doesn't go through because the idea is that it affected their stocks and all that when they were being, when it went out in the public, that they were for sale, right? And it might've happened. I don't know how many billions that they would have gotten bought for if the deal had gone through, but the government stopped it, did not want to create a monopoly. But that's the kind of money these employers are making. These companies are worth while they paying you $20 an hour and you supposed to be happy about that. Job people, yeah, they fine with it. We're not talking. I'm talking to you, entrepreneurial minded sister, who's just fearful, who's just uncertain, who has doubt, who's scared of risk. Guess what, ma'am? You've got a vision in your mind and a, and a, a dream in your heart for things you need to share with the world. You need to get out of this idea that trading hours for dollars is somehow going to get you there. It's not. And doing your dream on the weekends and at night, that's not going to get it either. You need to step out here and share your gifts with the world on a major stage. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Earning by the hour is never going to get you anywhere. That is a poverty situation. The, the acronym for job, just over broke. You probably heard that. And I heard another one. I've heard another one for what job means, but the bottom line is you are not going to get where you need to go earning by the, I don't care if they pay you $100 an hour, 150 as a contract, it does not matter. The bottom line is they have decided how much you are worth and it's limited to how many hours you can work. My income is not limited to how many hours I can work because I don't work by the hour. I get results and I pay well for getting those results. And you can have the same thing in your area of expertise, but you got to get out of that. Oh, if I can just work, let me work some overtime. Let me, let me see what I can do to make some more money. No, ma'am. You're never going to make enough to get wealthy working for somebody else. And before we go off on the, and this actually comes, this actually comes with my last point. Stop speaking those poverty principles. I don't want to be rich. Guess what? The only way you can make the impact you want to make in the world when you want to help people is with money because everything that people need somewhere down the line, money needs to be spent, whether it's a health issue, relationship, Financial, obviously that has to do with money. Anything that people need help with can be facilitated by you making money. So you staying broke does not help the kingdom for my church people, for my believers. It does not help the world. It is not a, these altruistic ideas that I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make this just a little bit. I'm just going to help people, help people by giving, buying the things that they need, by being able to invest in their communities and not just having to ask other people to do it. We need to build wealth in our communities so we can buy back our communities as black people. And we can only do that if we have money. You can't buy up the, the, the in my in my community, it's the West End of Louisville where there's a lot of black people that live. We can't buy up the West End if we broke. You can't do with the, the things you want to do to help people stand broke. You need to get wealthy so you can have the impact that you want to have. And you're not going to be able to do that staying in these poverty principles, uh, saying things like, I got a little list over here, saying things like money doesn't grow on trees, more of that. We got to, we got to, that there's a limited amount. There is no ceiling on what you can make unless it's a ceiling in your mind. Money can grow on the trees in your yard. Got to go make the donuts. Got to pay the bills. I'm just out here doing what I got to do. You ain't got to do nothing. Be black and die, as they say. You got to take control of what comes out of your mouth and stop speaking these things that are keeping you broke, calling people that are wealthy, filthy, rich. Why is there a negative connotation of that? I heard a coach say that recently and pointed that out. I was like, yeah. Why do we say they're stinking rich and filthy rich? Rich people or wealthy people, a lot of them that don't have the right intention, want you to believe there's a negative to being wealthy so that you will accept being broke and let them have all the money. But I'm here to tell you, I'm not believing their lies. I'm like, I'm going to be clean rich. I'm going to be clean wealthy, not filthy rich. Oh, words have so much power. And when you say things that keep you stuck, 
and everybody else is saying them, so it must be true. No, it's not true. None of the things that you say that keep you where you are are true. You don't have to do what you have to do. I wish I had known this 20 years ago because I could have been so much further ahead if I had known, no, you don't have to do what you have to do while your kids are young and then when they grow up, do your thing. No, you can do, wouldn't it be better to demonstrate to your kids that you can follow your dreams now? You don't have to wait until you squandered your youth and your best ideas and all of your energy in a company and made that person rich and sent them to college, their kids to college, took care of their aging parents, sent them on trips. And then when you retire, then you're supposed to live this great life. No, ma'am, don't accept that for yourself. Accept the greatness that you deserve and you deserve that in the now. And you can have that if you abandon these broke mindsets, these poverty principles that you're saying over and over because they're not true. They're lies from the pits of hell. Money can grow on trees in your yard, maybe not in your neighbor's yard, but you can grow it on your in your yard. As a matter of fact, I was at the store the other day and I saw something called a money tree, some kind of little plant. I should have bought one. I need to go back and get one because I need a money to grow on trees. Money does grow on trees, meaning that you it is everywhere. There's eight. Listen, and I'm going to have to get off of here. There are 8 billion people on this planet. And if you don't know that your tribe is out there waiting, praying for your special sauce, your secret sauce, your magic solution to their problems to come along. If you don't believe that, you crazy. Ma'am, I came today and I, I didn't get all excited. I didn't think this was going to go here, but our people need the most help because in, especially in America, we've been the most oppressed to get out of there. We can't keep asking our oppressor for a leg up. Why would they stop oppressing us? No, we need to stop the oppression on our own by buying back our communities, buying back our resources, stop spending everything we earn and earning it so slowly and working by the hour and accept that the things that they do with their kids, see, they don't teach their kids what we teach our kids. They teach their kids other stuff. They put their kids in business. We tell our kids, I need them. They need to have it rough like me so they can learn. No, every generation should not have to start over. We need to help our kids, set them up, buy our kids, give our kids down payments for houses like they give their kids down payments for houses. You see these little ridiculous kids out here doing things, driving things, going places. And you're like, how can they afford it? Their parents are helping them, but that's not, it's not always a crutch. Sometimes it is, but it's a leg up. It's a hand up so that they don't have to repeat the stuff you did. Throwing your kids out there to the wolves and saying, they gonna learn, they gonna learn today. All of that, time's up for that, ma'am. Get into this, get into this build wealth while you travel challenge that I got coming up. Get your VIP ticket and learn how to build wealth while you travel the world. Travel is a big deal for a lot of people because it's the one thing you can't do a lot of when you work for somebody else by the hour. You don't have enough time off that's paid. You don't have enough money to pay for the trips. Build your own wealth pool and you can do whatever you want to in life and help people the way you want to help them. And set your kids up for success. Go to buildwealthwhileyoutravel.com now and get in on this challenge. It's four days uh, basically drinking from a fire hose. I'm going to give you everything from start to finish of what you need to do to build this epic coaching business based on what you know now. I'm not going back to school. We're not getting certifications or none of that. That's not what we're doing. You don't need that. All you need is to be an expert in something and we're even going to help you to tease out what you're an expert in because you might not know how to frame it in a way where the market's going to be gobbling it up and opening up their wallets so that you can take money to help them to solve their problems. We're going to go through that, how to find your tribe, how to get your messaging out to your tribe, how to craft that messaging, all of that, and how to then when they come to you for help, how to delight them and completely blow their minds by helping them to get the very result that they came here, came to you to get. But it starts with knowing how to do that. And in this four-day challenge, we're going to be going through all of that. Drinking from a fire hose, it's going to be a lot. But why, stri why spread it out over the course of months and years when we can learn what we need to learn in the course of a few days and get started implementing the things that we need to do to have this epic coach. I love calling it epic because epic is major in size, right? Become a colossal coach where you're in demand, 
You're, you're not tethered to a location. You're free to travel the world. You have complete control over your time, complete control over your income, right? Buildwealthwhileyoutravel.com is where you need to go to invest in yourself and get your ticket. The tickets aren't expensive. VIP is $297, uh, the basic enrollment, which you don't want because it's just basic and you're not going to be basic. You're going to be a VIP, but that's just $97. Get, if you're not worth that now, you got to reassess your priorities. You spend more than that to get your hair done. It's time for you to invest in your business. It's time for you to invest in your freedom and your family's freedom. And it's going to start with the Build Wealth While You Travel Challenge. It's going to be starting soon. Um, on the, it's one scheduled for the 11th. So go ahead and get your ticket and get ready to have your mind blown. It's been my pleasure to share with you today. Hope you've learned something. I know you've learned something. I hope you're ready to implement it. Let go of the fear. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Stop using the excuses to keep yourself stuck and broke because it's not going to get any better if you just keep telling yourself the same thing. You got to do something different to get something different. So I hope you'll join me for the Build Wealth While You Travel Challenge. I'll be back tomorrow with another training broadcast. I look forward to meeting you in the challenge. We will talk soon. Have a great day.